want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? I'm Batman. Tim Burton's Batman defied naysayers and Hollywood logic alike to be one of the biggest movies Warner Brothers had produced up to that point. And close to three decades later, when Warner's DC Comics-based universe of films were in a bad spot, there was one answer. Bring in Michael Keaton to play Batman. I'm Batman. There's only one problem. Things didn't go as planned. And now Keaton's Dark Knight will never return. Ever. Before we get too deep into today's episode, please be sure to subscribe to Nerdstalgic in order to stay up to date with all our superhero videos we've got coming out. Michael Keaton came roaring back to public prominence with his Oscar-nominated turn in 2014's Birdman. In the film, he played a mentally on-the-edge actor who had previously starred in a massive blockbuster franchise about an avian-themed superhero. Not exactly hard to see the parallels between the character and Keaton himself, and those parallels caused quite a stir among critics and movie-going audiences alike. Off the back of this resurgence, he booked roles in projects like Spider-Man Homecoming, Spotlight, and The Founder. It was a second act that no actor could have dreamed of. And yet, there was more. And it came with a bat-shaped insignia. Keaton had originally walked away from the role of Batman in the early 90s, after Joel Schumacher took over the reins of the Batman film franchise, after Tim Burton was pushed out due to Batman Returns underperforming and being thought of as too dark and overtly sexual. Meow. Schumacher was brought in with a decidedly more campy perspective on the world's greatest detective. And contrary to popular belief, Keaton was originally going to star in the Schumacher-directed project. However, Keaton quickly realized that his idea of a grounded origin story exploring the inner life and motivations of Bruce Wayne was never going to happen. So he walked away. He said, I don't understand why everything has to be so dark and everything's so sad. And I went, wait a minute. Do you know how this guy got to be Batman? <laughs> then in 2020, when Deadline ran a rumor mill article that Keaton was in talks to reprise his beloved take on Batman, fans of both Keaton and the character were both shocked and excited. I'm Batman. However, that positive emotion was then met with a slightly befuddled confusion by the fact that Keaton would be appearing in the long gestating Flash film. Rumor had it that Keaton's Batman would appear in the film as a multiverse version of Gotham's Dark Prince, only to the end of the movie, replace Ben Affleck and become the primary version of Batman to live in the DCEU going forward. His role in the greater continuity of films would be that of the DC version of Nick Fury in the MCU. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. Keaton would be utilized as the connective tissue for the overarching narrative of the universe, and the unseen mastermind of much of the big status quo shifts moving forward for the studio's universe. Or at least, that was the plan. Only problem being that this idea would never truly come to fruition, partially due to box office underperformance of The Flash, and partially due to studio ineptitude and an ever-revolving door of corporate regime changes. The possibilities of having Keaton's Batman be a dark and plotting Batman doing what needs to be done to foster another generation of heroes is a great concept. It also pays respect to the cinematic lineage of DC Comics on film. It's an idea so great, it almost feels like fan fiction. The original ending of The Flash would have seen Barry Allen's Flash realizing that he had rewritten the universe to now be an alternate timeline populated by Sasha Kaye's Supergirl and Keaton's Batman. This would have been the setup for a new status quo within the DC filmic universe. There would have been remnants of Zack Snyder's DCEU, but there also would have been several new additions. One of the key rumor talking points was that Supergirl and Batgirl were going to be placed front and center in this continuity, having them ostensibly serve as the new Superman and Batman of the DCEU, with Keaton's Batman working as their mentor. Barry, what are you doing? What? Our kids are gonna wanna see this. Your kids? However, it was decided by Warner Brothers not to pursue this direction, despite shooting all of Keaton's scenes for this proposed ending. This version was eventually abandoned and replaced, but that's a story for another day. Who the f is this? After wrapping up The Flash, plans at the time were full steam ahead on the idea of Keaton as Nick Fury. And he shot a supporting role in the now permanently abandoned Batgirl movie starring Leslie Grace. As the rumors had insinuated, the film featured Keaton in a mentor role guiding Grace's Batgirl through her fledgling outing as a vigilante. The project was also going to feature Brendan Fraser as the Bat villain Firefly and the return of J.K. Simmons as Commissioner Gordon. However, despite the rumored plans to make Batgirl and Supergirl the center of the DCU, the film was cancelled during post-production. Variety would later publish a piece about the logic behind this move, and the short answer 
answer is, Warner Discovery's new CEO David Zaslov's approach to making the company as profitable as possible is simple. Tax write-offs. And if you don't release the film, you can write it off. Additionally, there were rumors that he was not interested in the idea of a DCU led by Supergirl and Batgirl. Thus, into the garbage with all of it. But these stories aren't the only films that Keaton's Batman was scheduled to appear in before getting the axe. Aquaman 2, which had its own production troubles, was originally supposed to have a cameo from Keaton's version of Gotham's Dark Knight. Why? In order to set up his eventual appearance in The Flash. However, due to the shifting production timelines and release dates, the Aquaman film was pushed until after The Flash, thus making his cameo null and void. And because tragedies come in threes, although maybe this is the fourth depending on how you count, here's the proposed Keaton Batman role that hurts the most. Rumors propagated by Kevin Smith suggested that Batman Beyond would have been the next film on Keaton's schedule had The Flash been a success. It would have been the first live action appearance of the beloved animated character. This is the idea that they should have brought Keaton back for. Why was he in a Flash movie? As corporate insurance. Warners wanted to make a crisis movie, but they didn't have the narrative runway to make it a big enough event, so they just reverse engineered it out of the Flash, and they used fan enthusiasm for Keaton and his version of Batman as the anchor point. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. But that just wasn't enough to make The Flash, the character's first solo outing, work as a crossover event with characters that have nothing to do with him. Finally, when James Gunn and Peter Safran were named as co-CEOs of DC Studios, basically all the potential plans for Keaton's Batman went out the window. They reshot the ending of The Flash to not feature Keaton, and even shot new footage of him dying in the climactic battle in the film's third act. And unfortunately, that will probably be the last time we see his version of Bruce Wayne. To put it bluntly, Keaton deserved better. We can't bring you back, can we? You already did that. If they were going to bring him back, it shouldn't have been in a Flash movie. It should have been in a film that fully respected and revered his legacy and standing in the genre of superhero films. He should have been the star of a big screen adaption of The Dark Knight Returns or Batman Beyond. The movie should have been as reverential to the character as the audience is to the actor. But instead, we got weird barefoot fight scenes and Bruce as a would-be impressionist painter. Comparing the revolving door of decision makers and quagmire of poor narrative choices that the folks running Warners have made really puts it into perspective just what a modern marvel the MCU truly is. The fact that they made three phases of films that crescendoed into a completely satisfying finale is pure magic. DC can't even bring one actor that everyone wants to see back in a satisfying way. Ultimately, it's a complete gift that we got to see Keaton's Batman on screen at all. However, it's bittersweet due to how he was used, how the plans for continuing adventures were abandoned, and how poorly the whole thing was managed. Come on, Barbie. Let's go party. Hopefully, this can be a teachable moment for Gunn and Saffron's new go at supervising the DCU. When plans are rolled out, you really need to stick to them. And well, that's all we have for this episode of Nerdstalgic. What did you think of Keaton's Batman in The Flash? Let us know down in the comments below, and as always, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos just like this.